you are those who take the path that leads to greatness. The road could be lonely, deserted and desolate. When you get there, you will know you are there. Right here, in this presence, standing on a higher ground. Island Church, raising global leaders. The seed of faith by the word of God takes root in your life. It cannot be blown away, even by the strongest wind of strange doctrines. At Island Church, testimonies abound. Island Church, raising global leaders. inauguration service July 11 2020 it's gonna be a day of joy a day of rejoicing Highland Church is born and is alive I want to especially invite you to be part of the inauguration service of this ministry again July 11 and the time is 11 a.m. please know that this is going to be a virtual event to watch online in the comfort of your home or anywhere you find yourself and it's going to be live on all our social media and do live on Facebook, live on Instagram, live on the YouTube. And we're going to be tweeting live on Twitter. And just one ID, multiple platform, HL Church NG is the ID. Just type HL Church NG on any of these platforms. It's on the screen right now. And you can watch all our inaugural service on July 11th. 
2020. Time again is 11 a.m. I'm specially inviting you to be part of Israel, be part of this event. This is the starting point for Island Church. It's going to be a day of joy, a day of glory. See you there. Yeah. 
Life on Mix Hi everyone, we want to welcome you specially to the long awaited and the most anticipated event at the moment. It's the Island, Island Church, Church Inauguration Service. Service. I know for sure a lot of people would like to be here physically for this glorious event, but we need to adhere strictly to the directives of the state. So, for this reason, kindly share the live stream link on your timeline. One ID, multiple platforms at HL Church NG. If you're watching on Facebook, post a watch party. And if you're watching us on Instagram and YouTube, please share the link. We are also live on Mix LR. You know, a lot of awareness has been created concerning this event. You have been yearning for this day. And we are excited as you are. This event is going to be like no other. As it promises to be power-packed, mind-blowing, expect divine visitation, glory upon glory, and praise and worship like never before. To our viewers all over the world, we implore you to stay glued to your devices. You don't want to miss any moment. Make sure you're not watching alone. Invite friends, families, neighbors to this great event. Thank you so much. Do not go anywhere as the service is about to start. made and we're excited to see this day. We thank God because the Lord has brought us to that day that we've been waiting for, the inauguration service of Highland Church. Wherever you are, I want to enjoy you to be seated, invite your friends, invite, invite your family members, and let's be a part of this service because God is said to do something new in our lives, in our families, in this ministry. And so wherever you are right now, we are about to go for the opening prayer. And I want to rise on your feet and begin to appreciate God for his faithfulness over our lives. Let's give God all the glory. Let's give God all the honor. Let's appreciate the ancient of days. The one who has made this day to be. Let's appreciate the one who has given the vision 
to bring about Island Church. Let's appreciate the one who has brought us thus far. The Bible says, He is our Ebenezer. He told the Lord has helped us. Somebody lift up your voice and say, Father, I thank you for this day. I thank you for making me to be a part of history. I thank you for making me to be alive to see a day like this. And from the bottom of my heart, I say, thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Heavenly Father, oh God, for all that you have said to do in our midst of this afternoon, this morning. We give you praise. We give you honor. We'll exalt your name. The, what the Bible says, for you have made all things ready. And Lord, we are excited. We are excited for the things you are said to do this morning. We give you all the praise, our Father. Glory be to your name. In the name of Jesus, I want you to quickly ask God for one thing. This meeting must not leave you the same way. Ask God for one thing you want him to do in your life. I say, Father, in this meeting, as history is being made today, let history be made in my life. Let something remarkable be my testimony, be my portion for being a part of this service. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we give you praise. We ask, oh God, that you have your right of way in this meeting. We ask, oh God, that you will move in a mighty way. We ask, oh God, that the seal of authority Authority and our approval will be upon Island Church in the name of Jesus. We we'll give you all the praise for it is done. Thank you, our Father, for in Jesus' mighty name we are praying. Somebody shout a thunderous amen. Church, give the Lord some shout. Come on. Are you ready to praise the Lord? On the highland level. Come on. Yes, sir. I will praise you, Lord, for your great power. You will bless me, your father. Now I dance like a wind.
Detroit, Saga. In the morning, when I wake up, I will sing your praise unto you, my God. Yeah. I will sing, I will dance to you. You will be my help for now and now. to Highland Church, a home for everyone. And today I'm so glad, so thrilled to have everybody joining us on ground and on the internet. We believe God is here with us and wherever you may be, regardless where you are in the world, God is beaming into your life from here. His presence with Tabernacle with you in Jesus' name. Today is a joyous day. Today is the day we move from Egypt 
into our Kenya life. We have entered into our rest eventually. Father, we thank you for that. Before we proceed, I would like to give a special recognition to our Father in the Lord. We want him to be seated and he's around and God will bless us with that in Jesus' name. Uh, I want to especially acknowledge some people here that has made this occasion, this event to be possible and to be successful today. Without you, I tell you, we won't be recording this kind of huge success we are having this morning. I will start with the set man. We want to appreciate you, our set man, in the person of Pastor Joseph Aborowa and his beautiful wife, Mrs. Atinuke Aborowa, our mommy in the Lord. Praise the Lord. If you are excited, shout hallelujah. I also want to take this opportunity to appreciate the effort of our Central Executive Council, starting with our eminent pastor, Shola Adegbenro, who is not here at this moment. I also want to take a special recognition of our pastor, Pastor Ni Oshusoya, a member of the Central Executive Council, and his beautiful wife, Mrs. Shei Oshusoya. I also want to recognize our amiable, eminent pastor right there in Abuja. We all know the apostle, Pastor Kenny. Kenny the Odulami and his beautiful wife, Kemi Odulami. I also want to take a special recognition of our eminent pastor, Andrew Adegbenro, Akinduro, and Mrs. Kemi Akinduro. You are welcome. Thank you for your support. And my very humble self, Larry Omojowo, a pastor in this ministry, and my beautiful wife, Pastor Mrs. Adimbola Omojowo. Praise the Lord. It's a joyous day. I want us to loosen up. I want us to be free, relax, be comfortable in God's presence. It's not to be eye uptight. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. It's the dawn of a new day. Praise the Lord. I also want to recognize all our planning committee for this inauguration. You did a wonderful work, and God will bless you in Jesus' name. And also, especially to recognize the powerhouse. For 120 days, they've been waiting upon the Lord, praying for this day and for Highland Church. May the Lord bless you all, the prayer team. May God bless you in Jesus' name. I also want to take a special recognition of all members of our workforce in Island Church. They have been wonderful. The choir, see the way they've just ministered to us now. The media crew, the technical crew, the protocol, the sanctuary worker, all of them. The children church. God is amazing. Praise the Lord. I also want to appreciate all our consultants, vendors who make this today possible. Also our staff. And the most important in all of this. Because where there is a vision and there is no people, the vision is a waste. Now, you online worshiper, I take a special recognition of you. We appreciate all your comments and likes since we've started the campaign. May the Lord bless you. And I believe as you stay glued to your seat or wherever you may be, probably you are listening to us or you are viewing us this time around, God will touch your life in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Praise Jesus. Now, the reason why we are here is simply to unveil, and that is what we are here. Many things will be coming forward, and as you stay tuned, may the Lord bless you. Highline Church is here, and life of many will be transformed in Jesus' name. Thank you for being here. God bless you.
in my own opinion, the reason why it was easy for us to decide to join Island Church was because of the several encounters with God that we have had uh, through the ministration of the set man of this ministry. Our senior pastor, Pastor Joseph Aborowa, is my spiritual father, our spiritual father. I actually gave my life to Christ under his ministry. The Lord has showed him the vision ahead of him, which is Island Church. I believe in the vision. I believe in the leadership. I was happy when the notice came to me that we are becoming a full-fledged church. For me, it was an answered prayer. Well, I give thanks to God for the vision of Island Church. I'm so grateful to God. I'm so excited about it. One thing is for the leader to be somebody you can look up to. I've had an encounter with the man of God for over 10 years now, right from my days in school. I finished from University of Lagos. And ever since then, he's been motivating, pushing me that you know what, Olu, you can be the best you want to be. He has been a mentor. He has nurtured me from when I was a young believer. So I believe in his leadership and I'm willing to be on board with him. We are very glad to be a member of this ministry because we look at the, the years past and we observe that the leadership here preached the word of God without limit. They preach it undiluted. It was the first time I attended service. I could say I had something to take home. And what I had to take home actually changed my life ever since then. We have seen that there is God in this place. There is grace in this place. There is blessing in this house. We've been part of this house for quite a while now. We see him as our man of God, and we want to follow God in his life and work with him in Island Church. Coming from years back, Pastor Joseph has been a wonderful father. The words he shared, it will always minister to you anywhere you are. And I think it's the propeller for we being a member of Island Church. Like our theme says, raising global leaders. My expectation is that this would continue. The word of God would be stronger, would come out with more power. Um, the love in the environment, the love for everyone would be on the increase. First and foremost, I want Island Church to live out the prophecies of God that has gone ahead of it and we want to see God bring to pass every word they have said about Island Church so that everyone can know and agree that this ministry is a ministry established of God. I look forward to seeing the fulfillment and the manifestation of all the great prophecies that has gone ahead. I look forward to seeing every member of this ministry, you know, experiencing the global grace. We expect to see God in, in terms of quality ministration, impartation, anointing, change, transformation of life. What I actually want is a place where my children can grow spiritually. For us as parents, we, we, we already have a, a basis that we can flow with, with or without going to the church premises. But what I want to call is a place where the children can grow spiritually. I also expect that there will be um, more productivity even in the life of everyone who is a member of the church. I expect that the church would, as we are, we are already global, but we would continue to increase our presence um, globally. And I remember very well that uh, we were told of five pillars of prophecies that God gave concerning Island Church. We want to see each and every one of these prophecies come to pass. My expectation for this ministry also is to continue in meeting lives, especially in the area of the Yoruba church. I want the church to look very well into the Yoruba ministry and also meet lives, meet their needs, meet the word they need part time and also meet their needs. I personally look forward to also being a vessel. I'm not, I'm not being a member to be a spectator. I want to be positively influenced and also receive the grace to be a global voice, to be of positive change. I want the faith of Ireland Church to spread all over the world. I want it to spread across the world, even for signs and wonders, for greater impact, for greater manifestation. And I also expect that everyone that will be connected 
to Ireland Church will enjoy a greater grace upon their lives. I want infrastructural improvement in the area of e transmission so that we can reach the world at large in fulfillment of what the Bible says, go ye into the world and, and make disciples of all nations. I also expect the ministry to look into the area of affecting the children and giving the children world-class investment. My expectations from Ireland Church is actually far beyond what I can see presently. Because what I see about Island Church is actually greater than what could have even ever come to the heart of man. Island Church is home to everybody, to those in faith, to those that are trodden, and everyone that wants to connect to faith, to God. Get ready because God is said to do great things. Get ready to experience the supernatural. Get ready to experience the phenomenal. Get ready to experience the miraculous. Get ready because this is the church age. No man will doubt what he can see. Uh, you don't doubt what you see. And the first thing is you want to look at the members of Island Church. You want to look at the testimonies being shared by members of Island Church and how God has lifted ordinary men from grass to grace, how God has transformed lives of members of Island Church. Uh, whatever is happening in Island Church now, we perceive and we are convinced that there is a cloud of glory that is about to descend on every member of Island Church. We also believe that there is a way for glory that is about to begin. My advice to you outside there is for you to be a part of these waves of glory, be a part of this move. Island Church is a place to be. And when you're in Island Church, don't just come and be a listener. Come and be a doer of every word that you receive. Because every word that you receive, when you do it, that is when you activate it. And that is when you be grateful you actually did so. And it is from doing it that you become an islander indeed. Come and enjoy the grace, the blessing that is in this house. We have been part of this house. God has transformed our life. I would like to invite you to be part of this grace. God is changing life in this house. There is God in Island Church. If you have not joined Island Church, what are you waiting for? I encourage you to take that step today. We are located at number 22 Owe Street. Um, you could also join our services online for now. And then even after the pandemic is over and the um, restrictions have been completely lifted, I encourage you to come and um, worship with us. Island Church is a place where the word comes out with a lot of fire. What I've learned again is you are built by the kind of words that you hear. The word you hear is what um, makes the difference in your life. So I encourage you to come to a place that is filled with the word of God. When you have the word of God, you have power. When you have power, you are able to rule in whatever space you find yourself. I encourage you to come with your children. I encourage you to come with your parents, your grandparents. Everyone is all welcome to Island Church. God bless you. Enjoy the grace of God as you join us to service. Is 
praise you tonight. Say, blow my mind. Blow my mind and settle all things that I need. Lord, I say, blow Yeah. <laughs>
a message. I can do anything. In Island Church, we can do anything by the enablement of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. I welcome you all from all over the world watching us. This is a time that we've been waiting for and we thank God for this day. Um, my assignment is very simple. Um, we want to unveil the real identity of Island Church. What we have been seeing is just a, a riaza. The Island Church logo you've been seeing is not really our logo. It's called the pre-launch logo that we use for all our advertising material and campaign. But we have an identity. Identity is very important. Now, you've seen that many churches around, you don't need to see their name. When you see their logo, you will know which church this is. And that's what Island Church has done. You see many big brands in the world. You will see their logo, and you will know what they stand for. So when you see Island logo anywhere, you know that these are global leaders. This is a ministry that raised global leaders by the empowerment of the Holy Ghost, by the word. Our raw material is the word of God to raise global leaders. And I want, to, I want you to stay tuned as I just take you through a few elements of our you know, logo. Um, the logo has three key elements. And I will speak to them very briefly. One of the elements you will see in the logo is light. That is a light as part of the logo. And I think the light is part of the foundational scripture for the church when the senior pastor uh, announced this new direction. And you can see that in Matthew chapter 5, verse 14. Matthew 5, 14 says, You are the light of the world. A city is set on an hill and cannot be hid. 
to one of the elements or the core of Island Church is that we are the light of the world. A city set on an E cannot be hid. Island Church. We are in a city set on an E. A city set on a mountain. We are the light. When you put, the Bible said, you, no man put up a light and put it under the bushes. If you have done that, Island Church has come to help you put your light on the mountain top for the world to see. Hallelujah. Another item that you will see is the mountain. That is something like a mountain flat where the light is sitting on, 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 the, on the logo that we're going to unveil. And there is a scriptural backing for that as well. Isaiah chapter 2, verse 2. And he said, it shall come to pass in the last day. Are we not in the last day? We are in the last day. That the mountain of the Lord's house shall be what? Shall be established on the top of the mountain. And shall be exalted over the east. And all nations will flow into it. No wonder. We are being watched all around the world right now. I can tell you, no less than 10 countries are, are watching us. People from different nations. All nations. We are going to cover all nations. In the name of Jesus. This is prophetic. All nations. Again, that is our scriptural foundation. Isaiah chapter 2 verse 2. That it shall come to pass. And today is the day that it has come to pass. Hallelujah. That the mountain of the Lord house shall be established. Where? Island Church, on the top of the mountain, and shall be exalted over the east, and all nations shall flow into it. And then these two, if you put them together, they are the icon of the ministry. So if you put those two together, you can use them as well, separate from the main logo. The third item that I've added to these two is the name Island Church. So when you put these th three together, then you know that these are people what, that are mandated to raise global leaders. And I can tell you that in our midst already we have global leaders. I am a global leader. I am a leader in my own right. And that's the consciousness that all our member has. We are leaders. Everywhere we work, we are leaders. When you give us more assignment, we turn it big. We, we shine with it. No wonder this month is a month of shining. Everyone listen to me all over the world. This month you will shine in the name of Jesus. The grace that will be impartation in this service. We are not just unveiling island logo or anything. Ministration, word is coming again. Because our raw material is the word of God. And as you hear the word this morning, afternoon, anywhere, whatever time it is where you are, you will see grace coming into your house. There is no limitation. Just like the man told Jesus, you don't need to come into my house, but just speak the word. What will be spoken today? God said the word at the beginning, and we saw what happened. Everything God said, God saw. Hallelujah. I don't want to preach message, please. I'm just asked to unveil logo. Hallelujah. We have a lot of other things, which is some of our core value. I'll just mention it briefly. Uh, when you see island people, the islanders, you will see people of excellence. You will see people of wisdom. wisdom. You will see people of power. You will see people of love. You will see people of peace. You will see people of character. And you will see people of commitment. Anything we do, we are committed to it. Hallelujah. I think I've wet your appetite enough. Uh, at this junction, I would like to unveil the identity of Island Church. Wherever you see this, you know that this is Island Church and the vision is to raise global leaders. Right now, can we have the riffing?
Is that not beautiful? Put your hands together for Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, I just left you know, I just a low left. land to an high land right now. Is it not beautiful? I welcome you on to Island Church. Hallelujah. Give God praise anywhere you are in the world. Give God. Celebrate Jesus. Celebrate Jesus. Celebrate Jesus. You are living out your low level estates. In the name of Jesus. God is setting you on an island. Or highland of glory. In the name of Jesus. Give him praise. Hallelujah. Give him praise. Give him praise. Give him praise. Memory card don't ni no polo. How many gig you need? You know, how many gig you need? Uh, unlimited terabytes. <laughs> <laughs> copy me. She be on the Unlimited. Unlimited. Egbo, many your shape, but only I fingerprint your papa. Yanu Lani. What a mighty God. We say, he let it will. What a mighty God. We say, if I have a leke to me, I go. One big becky like Bodule. Jesu, 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 Nikoni. Oh, like Bodule, I'll lay away, I'll let go. Oh, like Bodule, I said, I was. Oh, she I do pray. Anyone Alagbara, <laughs> Nibata la bara, fe fe bara, ba bara, no wo ni ba. Kila uba fi songe reti o shewa, she bi akwa lo yoluwa o. Kila uba fi songe reti o shewa, she bi akwa lo yoluwa o. Aba bi akwe yonfu, koni je, onje domino pizza. La 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 la, on the KFC. La 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 la, on the TFC. La 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 la, Kony the Shiki Republic. Iki Okpelo the Baba. Oh yeah, Faba le ketu mi agbo. Oh my God, ni kibo do simbe. Do simbe aki do. Do simbe. Oh, do mu angita. Ani wala wa ole kong yo. Bao bari gita, kile wi iran la. That is a lie. Yeah, yeah. Ani wala wa ole kongi. 
Bao bari ki bon. E wi fun won i ola. E wi fun won o wi pe ko mama si bari ya o. Nothing nothing is a barrier to praise the Lord. It is a matter of the heart. It's not a matter of instrument or music. Bi mo ba ti ri shekere. Ma kori yizo je la ti nu wa komi wa. Ma kori yizo ni bu ore. Mani wi pe baba you are wonderful. Mani wi pe baba you are beautiful. Mani wi pe baba you are excellent. Ezi for you. E to bi ju bo bo aye lo we. Nothing, nothing is a barrier to praise the Lord. It is a matter of the heart. It's not a matter of instrument or music. Be more battery shaker. My body is okay. Latino or for me, what? My body is only poor. Money will be baba, you are wonderful. Money will be baba, you are beautiful. Money, money will be baba, you are excellent. Let's go to you. I don't be too poor. I love you.
1994, uh, I started my professional exams, my ICANN program. Uh, I went to a school called Student Pi around Jibowu in Lagos, Nigeria. I remember that first night in Pi, uh, I went to the fellowship ground to pray. Immediately I lifted up my hand, I had a voice from heaven, and God speaks to me that way from time to time. That voice said to me, you are here not only to qualify, but also to affect life. Vision. It has been said, is the art of seeing what is invisible to others. For many in our world today, and our country Nigeria in particular, that which is invisible resides within them, invisible even to themselves, and waiting for a sublime spark of discovery. Like all momentous events, it began with a vision. 
The vision that eventually led to the birth of the Highland Church in 2019 AD was born out of a revelation that sprang up in the most unlikely of circumstances, like a fragile plant that shoots up in hostile terrain in defiance of the harsh elements. This revelation came to a man who in his entire life had always wanted to serve God by serving his fellow men and society. Both as a professional accountant and as a devout Christian, a man by the name Joseph Aborowa. Very early in life we served the Lord. Our parents, both parents, uh, were pastors. After I left secondary school, I gave my life to Jesus, even though from a Christian home, but not uh, that kind of experience of new birth. I had an encounter with God under the ministration of Pastor Daniel Davis. I'll say Pastor Daniel Davis is my first pastor. I gave my life to Jesus in that ministry. In the year 1993, I met the ministry of uh, Bishop David Oyedepo and um, I started following the bishop, attending meetings in those days in Rajioba, ministers conference and all that. So uh, it was a great experience for me in the early 90s. In this vision, which came to him in the year 1998, Aborowa found himself involved in a fateful encounter would point him inexorably towards his life's work here on earth. That revelation was the genesis of the divine mandate upon the life of this chartered accountant and servant of God, along with his faithful and committed partners to birth what is today a spiritual institution poised to change entrenched paradigms about the power of Christian spirituality in the regeneration of souls as well as the material circumstances and the restoration of the tarnished destinies of individuals, families, communities and entire societies. In the year 1998, I had an encounter and the Lord spoke to me in that encounter. It was actually a vision. I saw myself boarding a motorcycle, what we popularly call in Lagos, Okada, going to a particular destination. And uh, all of a sudden, I found myself in another destination, shouting on the bike, man, this is not where I'm going. And the man, all of a sudden, pushed me off the bike, and I found myself in a place where it looks like a kidnapper din. I saw fire, I saw people crying, I had people shouting. I looked for the bike man, the guy was gone. Apparently was an agent of these evil doers. So immediately I wanted to run out of this particular premises where we have blood, fire, shouting. It was not a good sight. I mean, still remembering that vision uh, it, it, it's, it's very bad, a very bad sight to behold. And I was sweating profusely. I wanted to run away. And all of a sudden a voice came from heaven. You are here to deliver these people, where are you running to? And I woke up from that revelation and I started praying. For me, I didn't understand what is this all about? Is this all about a danger God is trying to save me from? But God said, it's not about me. Months after, I began to pray about this. The genesis of the Island Church vision is tied to these encounters, this revelation, this word coming from heaven. I'm in ministry, to rescue and save those who are discouraged. We are a ministry for those who are discontented. The Highland Church may have risen out of a vision that depicted the tragedy of the human condition, but the soil from which its seeds sprang up was far from barren. Long before the birth of the church, its founders were already involved in a Christian fellowship centered around the spiritual needs of accountants. Known as the Professional Accountants Christian Ministry, PACM, the fellowship served for several years as a place of spiritual refuge for accountant students and professional accountants. The last 21 years that I've come in contact with this ministry has been awesome. It has been an experience of learning 
and learning and learning uh, where every day we learn new things under the leadership of the set man, Pastor Joseph Aborofa. And, uh, uh, and through submission and obedience to this learning, I've seen a lot of tremendous transformation uh, from people, many of us, who were nobody when we came, who had nothing to write to me about some of us. We did not even have shame of any form whatsoever. But through God's grace, of making ourselves available to service in God's kingdom. God has transformed us. Going to the fellowship in those days, the first person that I had an encounter with was Pastor Joseph Aborowa, who greatly imparted my life in so many ways. There is no way we will talk about PSM without mentioning Pastor Joseph Aborowa, who have been a great leader, who have charted the course of this ministry in the last 25 years and God have been faithful working under his leadership I have been exposed to a lot of things God have used him for me used him for my family my vision in life became open to me those days uh, as, a, as a fellowship where we study for ICANN I remember I used to handle the Thursday revival hour and I can't miss that revival for anything. I have to rush from office to make sure I'm at the fellowship then to listen to him because he's always full of power. I mean, these days I look around and I was like, wow, those days are days of power, you know, where he would minister and people fell under the anointing, screaming and all that. You can feel it. You know, anyone that have known him in those days will know and he's still full of power, more power now. And um, he's so passionate about Christ, about the kingdom. The founding of the Highland Church is a concrete manifestation of the truism that such self-discovery and the transformation it brings is possible only by the grace of God and the power of the Holy Spirit. Countdown for the momentous event began appropriately enough with the very first prayer meeting on Saturday, March 14, 2020, an occasion that brought together committed believers who were divided into seven prayer groups, with each group designating a particular day of the week to fast and intercede for the new ministry. To this end, a general WhatsApp group was created where all the members of the various groups prayed for one hour daily on the platform between the hours of 9 p.m. and 10 p.m. This group of more than 240 adults have prayed for about 120 days. At last, a dream born out of a green revelation has become a glorious reality. The vision that God has given us is to raise global leaders empowered by grace, to, to raise leaders that will be um, um, leaders in their different spheres of life, leaders that will be men of influence. The mandate of the vision is to be a light to the world. Um, part of the pillars of the church is to be a mountain ch top church, to be an exalted church. Wherever we are, we stand out, we stand tall, to be a global church and then to be a church of grace. We've seen people that are nothing, that are distressed, that are, you know, um, nonentity. And over the years, they've joined the ministry and they've been transformed over the years. So I see uh, Island Church as a platform through which people's life can be transformed. The sort of people the Highland Church is calling out to are the proverbial wretched of the earth. Rather than seeking out perfect people who already have it all together, the Highland Church has set itself the task of perfecting people and ushering them into their better, most essential selves. Highland Church is a place of transformation. One thing God also spoke to me as I prepare for this ministry is that Highland Church will be the home 
of the supernatural, miracles, signs and wonders, is going to be a daily occurrence in Island Church. Members of Island Church, they are going to write signs and wonder. Island Church is home for all. It's, it can accommodate the poor because they will never be poor when they hear the gospel of Island Church. The gospel of Island Church is the gospel of Jesus. And the Bible encourages us to preach the gospel to the poor and liberate those who are captive, those who are in captive. In Island Church, nobody is stranded. It's going to be an atmosphere of joy, an atmosphere of love, an atmosphere of transformation, fruitfulness. The worship and the prayer in Island Church will be awesome. You're going to experience some of those worship uh, today in the course of this inaugural service. Like the biblical city set on a hill, whose light cannot be hidden, those who seek God's face under the banner of the Highland Church are empowered by grace to reach the limits of their potential in whatever area of endeavor they are engaged in. Founded upon five unshakable pillars of identity, as a mountaintop church, an exalted church, a pace-setting church, a grace church, and a global church, Highland is well on its way to fulfilling its founding vision, namely, to raise global leaders empowered by grace, and its mission, namely, to raise leaders in all nations through the teaching of the Word of God and empowerment of the Holy Spirit. It is a journey that is set to finally culminate in the official unveiling of the church today, Saturday the 11th of July, 2020. Island Church, these five pillars define expression in your life. You become a mountain top person, top of your career. You are exalted, lifted. You become a pace setter. You set the pace, others follow. In the last 25 years in ministry, I've seen this grace follow me. When people come in contact with the grace I carry, in their family, they become number one. In their place of work, they become number one. We've got a lot of prize winners in our ministry. Pace setting grace. So we carry grace. Because we know that we are what, who we are by the grace of God. Thanks to its identity as a global church, the Highland Church is set for nothing short of earthwide impact via the richness of its worship, prayer, and fellowship gatherings and its creative deployment of state-of-the-art online digital communications tools. No matter what you're trusting God for, trusting God for career advancement, business advancement, trusting God for the fruit of the womb, trusting God for increase and enlargement. Island Church is a place to be, is a place of transformation. Friend, I would like to welcome you to Highland Church. Highland Church is the home for all, a place of transformation, a place of blessing. Highland Church is all about transformation. In the course of praying for this ministry, different prayer points and words that God keeps speaking to us, one of great prominence in that powerhouse is that membership of Highland Church is the end of pain is the end of shame. You join Island Church, shame is over, pain is, pain is over, ridicule is over. I'd like to invite you to be a member of Island Church. Island Church is a place of transformation. One thing God also spoke to me as I prepare for this ministry is that Island Church will be the home of the supernatural. Miracles, signs and wonders, is gonna be a daily occurrence in Island Church. Members of Island Church, they are going to write signs and wonder. Island Church is home for all. Today, Saturday, July 11, 2020, is a day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Welcome to the Highland Church. Lord, the ancient
ancient of days, the one who has made this day possible today. Let's exalt and magnify his name. Lord, we worship you. Thank him for where we are coming from, for where he's taking us to, for where we are today. Jehovah, we celebrate you. You alone is worthy of all our praises. Thank you, Jehovah. In Jesus' mighty name, we have given thanks. Right now, we are going to pray, pray for Island Church, and we are praying for open heaven. We are asking God that God should open the heaven over Island Church. The book of Luke chapter 3 verse 21 tells us that now when, the, that now, when all the people were baptized, it came to pass that Jesus also being baptized and praying, the heaven was open. I want you to open your mouth and begin to declare that the heaven will be open over Island Church from this day in the name of Jesus. Island Church will not operate under closed heaven in the mighty name of Jesus. Rakozata libra da 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 Open your mouth and begin to declare that Island Church will operate under open heaven in the name of Jesus in all our services. There shall be miracles. There shall be signs. There shall be wonders in the name of Jesus. Rekuzata yagabali arado sata yagaba erika sata yagala da 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 The heavens over island church it is open today in the name of Jesus. We will not operate on the close heaven in the mighty name word find fulfillment even in the church today in the name of Jesus Rekuzata Yagavala Di Adadosa Eketeli Yaragadadadadada Lord we give you praise in Jesus mighty name we have prayed our vision is to raise global leader through the empowerment of the Holy Ghost by the grace of God and by the word of God I want us to pray this afternoon that the word of God will be effectual, effective and effectual in island church all over in the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and begin to declare in the mighty name of Jesus. The book of Acts says, Acts chapter 6 verse 7, and the word of God increased and the number of disciples increased. Open your mouth and begin to declare Faithful God, in Jesus' mighty name we are free. 
Jam your hands together for the Lord. Hallelujah. Celebrate the King of Kings. Celebrate the Father of God. This is just the beginning of new things yes. for you. Amen. The beginning of wonderful things. Hallelujah. Just the beginning. It's just the beginning. There's so much more God has in store. Just the beginning. It's just the beginning. It's not the end. This is just the overture. Just the beginning. Just the beginning. I know you're blessed. I know you're blessed. But you still. But you still haven't seen God's best. Not yet. No, no, not yet. Because I already know that God's been. Decree. And I decree, I prophesy, I prophesy with, with authority, that you are, you are the seen your best days yet, you are the seen your best days yet, you are the seen, you are the seen your better victory yet, the greatest victory is ahead of you, you are the seen your better victory yet, oh, because this is, this is
time. Say just the beginning. Say just the beginning. In your heart. In your heart, you know what God has promised. Say just the beginning. Just the beginning. Never compromise. Never compromise. Or settle for less. Or settle for less than you do. Say just the beginning. Just the beginning. I know. I know you're blessed. But you still have the same God. the beginning just the beginning in your finances yes 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 it's just the beginning just the beginning in your marriage yes 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 it's just just the beginning say in your business yes 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 I say just the beginning in everything you do It is just the beginning. For somebody watching us anywhere in the world, this afternoon is just the beginning of greatness for you. In the mighty name of Jesus. Again, I want to welcome you to this great inaugural service 
of Ireland Church. It's been great since we started 11 a.m. West African time. We've been enjoying God's presence and we give God praise. We acknowledge all our online community. Um, a lot of you watching on Facebook. I think we have more people watching on Facebook. Uh, a lot of you watching on YouTube. A lot of you watching on uh, I'm mean, listening on Mix LR, those who like to just hear audio. We acknowledge you. The Lord bless you all for being part of E3 this afternoon. It's going to be uh, a great meeting. It's been a great meeting this far. And we trust God that everything that concerns Island Church this day will be perfected. In the mighty name of Jesus. I have a short assignment here this afternoon just going to tell you more about Island Church, our pastors and leaders. They've been doing a good job of um, casting the vision before us. Thereafter, I'm going to invite uh, the man of God in the house to minister the word and impart grace upon us. Uh, so I'm going to also try to cast the vision uh, before us this afternoon. Island Church just like you watch in the documentary, it's a vision the Lord gave to us a long time ago. And uh, he gave us a spiritual root, a biblical root, in Isaiah chapter 2, verse 2 to 3. Isaiah chapter 2, verse 2 to 3, is the anchor scripture for this ministry. It shall come to pass in the last day that the mountain of the house of the Lord shall be established at the top of the mountain and shall be exalted above the hill, and all nations will flow into it. Verse three, verse 3 says that many people will go and say, let's go to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob, so that he can teach us his way, and we will walk in his path. For out of Zion shall go for the law, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. Second scripture the Lord gave us, Matthew chapter 5, verse 14. Matthew 5, 14, you are the light of the world. You are the city that is set on the hill that cannot be hid. Somebody, by this island church inauguration, your destiny will no longer be hidden. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. So island church members, no more hiding. It's time for you to shine as light. And God doesn't make mistake. This month of July, I'd like you to shout what is the theme for this month of July? It is my time to shine. It is the time of Islanders. It is the time of Island Church members to shine. Those of you who are watching us online, it is your time to shine. Your time of manifestation, your time of glory, that time is now in the mighty name of Jesus. And the Lord gave us five pillars from these two scriptures I've shared with you. He said, Island Church will be a mountain top church. It means we will stand out from others. The mountain on top of the hill. Island Church will stand out from other churches in the mighty name of Jesus. The Lord said to us that Island Church is an exalted church. Um, in Island Church, we have exalted people. People lifted by grace. Number three, the Lord said to us, Island Church members are pay setter. They will be first among equal. First in many, in many things. Island Church members will set the pace and others will comfortably follow. Amen. That used to be our confession many years ago. The Lord was preparing us for this day. He said we will take the lead and others will comfortably follow. Island Church members will be the salt of the earth. They are the light of the world. Number four, the Lord said to us that Island Church members, they carry grace. We are Grace Church. It takes grace to stand out. Those of you hearing us this afternoon, you will stand out. The grace of God will sort you out. Remember in 1 Corinthians 15, 10, Paul said, I am what I am by the grace of God. We are grace made. You saw those pictures. You can't believe you, can you reconcile? And I used to tell you about that prophecy that the time is coming where they cannot reconcile your present with your past. It's impossible to reconcile the brother Joseph you saw in that picture. Uh, the pastor Shagun you saw in that picture. <laughs> and the man you see today. You can't reconcile the pastor Larry you saw in that picture and the one you see today. You can't reconcile. I have more 
uh, pictures I have not shown you. I mean, I mean, acidic <laughs> that I have not shown. Uh, uh, you know, in preparing for this documentary, I had to go and check the archive and bring them out. Pastor was asking me, where, where is that place that we put the banner? It's the uncompleted building. Where, the mainland secondary school where I joined this ministry. Uh, that is the student pie. And even when we have departmental week in those days, we would decorate uncompleted. Did you see some of those decorations? Decorate uncompleted building for the glory of the later house. Hmm? You thought you have seen glory now. We have just started something new. The Lord said to us on Thursday, get ready for something new. Get ready for something new. What we are seeing today cannot be compared to the glory that is coming. There's something coming. I mean, we, we, are not selling. we thank God for where we are, but this is not where we are going. We thank God for what God has done, but God is here to do more and greater things in our life. And those of you watching us online, it will start with you. Those of us in the studio here, it will start with us in the mighty name of Jesus. The Lord said to me, the glory of the later house will be greater. We surpass the former. We have not seen anything. God prepared us. The Lord said to me, my first 25 years in ministry, which we celebrated last year, December. Actually, June last year, I clocked 25 years of pastoring this church. But God said, all that is Riaza. Preparation for something new we are stepping into from today. We set out today not by our we making. In fact, this inauguration was set for May 17th. But for the pandemic, uh, we find ourselves in July 11. And from the first day we started praying to today, it's 120 days. That's symbolic. And we have waited upon the Lord, fasted, prayed, prayed for 120 days. Tonight we're going to have Thanksgiving of that 120 days. I tell you, the grace of God upon this church is on the increase. And those of you watching me, those of you here, the grace of God upon your life is on the increase. In the name of Jesus. Number five, pillar of this church. Pillar represents the things that hold on into Island Church. The things that we're going to see. The prophecy of Island Church. Number five, he said we are a global church. No one hearing me this afternoon will remain local. Amen. I, I have told you before, you can live in Canada and be local. You can live in New York, live, born in New York and never step out of New York. You are still local. But the destiny of this church is not Jibu. The destiny of this church is not Nigeria. The destiny of this church, even when we open branches international, is not going to be local. And I speak to your life this afternoon, your destiny is going global. Your career is going global. Remember that scripture, Isaiah 2 verse 2. He said, all nations, not one, not two, not three, not four, not five, shall flow into it. Get ready for global encounter in Island Church. Can I hear a loud amen from someone? Yeah. This is the time we are all been waiting for. You know, uh, somebody asked me, who are the people you are sent to? I tried to uh, say one or two things in that documentary, but let me show you the scripture the Lord gave me. After that encounter in 1998, uh, of you are, you are here to deliver these people, where are you running to? So I had series of encounters and revelations. Uh, some of them, for the brevity of time, we cannot share. But a worthy of note is a scripture the Lord gave me for ministry. First Samuel chapter 22, verse 1 and 2. First Samuel 22, go straight to verse 2 for time. Verse 1 talk about David running from Saul. And while Saul was chasing after David, David found himself in a cave called the cave of Adullam. And the Lord told us in verse 2 now, 2 Samuel 22, verse 2, the category of men that went to meet David in the cave of Adullam. Everyone in distress, three categories of people. Everyone in debt and everyone discontented. And the Lord said to me, these are the people you are sent to. You are sent to people who are in distress. You are sent to people who are indebted. You are sent to people who are discontented about life. First encounter. Second encounter, Genesis chapter 30, verse 23 and 24. The Lord also reminded me, growing up, some of my secondary school friends may be watching this. Uh, they know me my, by my, in fact, actually, I was born with that as a first name. 
My first name is Olubenga. My middle name is Joseph. And my surname, Aborowa. But when I got born again, and I got this encounter before I came into ministry, the Lord reminded me of my middle name called Joseph. And he says, make it the first name. I reverse the order. Okay? And he said, this is your ministry. I'm talking about the early 90s. Genesis 30, 23. Let's see the meaning of Joseph. Joseph's mother, Rachel, in the house, the other woman gave back to boys, children, and she had none. And finally, God, the Bible says she conceived. Somebody with the loudest amen, you will conceive. You conceive something great. Something great is coming your way. The mother conceived and bear a son. And she said, God has taken away my reproach. And verse 24, and he said, the name of this boy shall be called Joseph. And the Lord said to me, verse 23 is the meaning of Joseph. 24 has another meaning. Two meanings actually. Verse 23 says, God has taken away my reproach. Now give me 24. 24, and he says, the name of the boy shall be called Joseph for the Lord shall had me another. The Lord shall add to me another. So second meaning of Joseph means increase because another is coming. And first meaning is somebody will wipe away the reproach of others. So I, I began to take after the first meaning. To wipe away the reproach of others. To save people who are in distress. To, save, to help people who are indebted. Those who are discontented and tired about life. And I began to pursue after the meaning of that name and I began to tell people call me by Joseph because that's my name that's my destiny I am here to wipe away the reproach of others I'm here to save people from indebtedness somebody you are hearing me today you are coming out of debt you are paying all your loan in the mighty name of Jesus there is divine recovery for you somebody you are hearing me you want to commit suicide hope is coming to you life is coming to you strength is coming to you so the Lord has called me to put smile on the faces of men. On the, I, I, I take pleasure when I see somebody who is in trouble and, is, and the Lord bring them out of trouble. It's my pleasure to see somebody who is tired about life and you give hope to them. You know, we were all like that. When I came in 1994 to write the professional exam, we were without form. In fact, one of my wife begged me, I celebrate the woman for following me because when she met me, I, I love, I love, I don't have form. My life was void. Darkness was upon the face of the head. You know, there was nothing. And I've told you severally before, when I met this woman, I had only two trousers on earth, many in heaven, but they yet to manifest. But two trousers on earth. And uh, if I fall into a gutter, which I did in one of those occasions, uh, I must wear the second one. And if the second one, if it rains the way it's raining these days, heavily, and they are not um, washed, I must wear it like that. You know, but in all, we give God praise. Yeah. Praise the Lord. So what are we saying? We have a vision to wipe away the tears of men. And that's why the vision and mission statement of Island Church was crafted along this line. We raise global leaders. It doesn't matter their background, where they are, what they do right now, what's happening to them. We raise global leaders, and these leaders are not going to be made because they went to university. They are empowered by the grace of God. Paul says, despite my degree law, my LLB and all of that, he said, I am what I am by the grace of God. In Island Church, grace will make people. In Highland Church, grace will transform people. And remember, the instrument is the word of God and the empowerment of the Holy Ghost. In Highland Church, men and women will be empowered by grace. They will hear life-changing word that will take them to where they belong in destiny in the name of Jesus. I'd like you to get ready this afternoon. The man of God will be bringing us in word. Deliberately, all through this um, inauguration, I, 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 Pastor Larry was almost mentioning his name. I said, no, don't do it. You know, and my reason is that on social media, we didn't publicize this. Otherwise, somebody now will just hear, Pastor Shegun Kingsley is here. He will run from his house and he will break the Lagos State Protocol rule. Uh, so we did not publicize it. 
my agreement with Pastor Shagun Kingsley is to do a Zoom because it was in London, lockdown, lock everybody down. And this man of God in London, I said, sir, on the inauguration day, you'll be bringing us the word and you'll be blessing us as our father. Uh, uh, he, hand of, uh, he handed over the ministry to us uh, in the student form of um, uh, professional accountant, student, Christian fellowship in those days when he moved to UK. And Pastor Shego agreed with me. He said, no problem. We can do a Zoom on that day. Actually, we, ag we actually agreed three meetings. First meeting was to bless our leaders and our workers praying for this ministry. Second meeting is to log in into this meeting via Zoom and be a blessing to us. Then third meeting, when lockdown is over, then you come and impart grace physically. I don't know whether our appointment has been disrupted by uh, this, but I think after this, there will still be another impartation. Uh, we serve a God of um, again and again. Praise the Lord. So, i like to bring up a great man of God, my father, uh, my prophet. Uh, my encounter is still, I, I still have things to say, so don't rush me. Uh, <laughs> my encounter with this great man of God uh, changed my life. You know, you can't talk about coming into ministry without mentioning Pastor Shego Kinsley for me. Journey into ministry is incomplete without a mention of that name. I think in UK they call him PSK, Pastor Shego Kinsley. Uh, I met Pastor Shego Kinsley when I came to write my professional exams in 1994. This man carried fire. This man imparted grace. And um, if in the late 90s, I think immediately I came in, maybe 95, 96 or so, or 97. I think it's not 97, 95, 96. Pastor Shegun can give us the specific date. 95, 96. Pastor Shegun moved to the UK and handed the ministry over to us to keep doing our thing. We lost contact. Many years later, in the year 2004, 2005, I got information that this man of God is in town. GSM came to Nigeria in 2001, so I was able to get his number. I connected with him. He gave me an appointment. He was lodging at one hotel around Omole, Lagos, Nigeria, called Peace Hotel. I went to meet him in that hotel. We exchanged pleasantry, told him about how we are doing as a ministry, I also used that opportunity to invite him for the 10th year anniversary of the ministry he handed over to us. So we started counting, we gave the, the, the fellowship a ministry phrase from the time I joined. And I said, Pastor, 2004, can you come and bless us? And we went to that, if you remember that, Redeemed Church, Meek and Honey Parish around Maryland. That was my mission of going to him. But along the line of our discussion, I said, Pastor, you know what I want to do in life? This is 16 years ago. I want to be a pastor and I want to go into full-time ministry. And that, be, that resulted into something else. He had to tell me to sit down, lectured me, gave me word. I said, when I'm 40, 16 years ago, I was not. I had some years to go. And I said, when I'm 40, I want to do full-time ministry. And he said to me, this one you are doing, is it not full-time? The life being blessed. And he gave me a lot of example. Told me so many things I didn't know about ministry. And that singular encounter changed my focus. Changed my perception about the work that I was even doing as at that time. And everything he so told me. Don't forget last Sunday my message about Esther. Three things I told you last Sunday. Number one, you must have who? A mentor. Number two, you must follow what? Instruction. Number three, you must do what? You must have high self-esteem. That is what made Esther. Mordecai was the mentor. He followed the instruction of Mordecai and she carried herself in the palace. And she was able to become the queen. Mordecai said, when you get there, don't tell them about your past. Don't tell them about your identity. Don't tell them about where you are coming from. Otherwise, you are not a queen material. And she had air to instruction. Everything he told me, I adhered to it for ministry. 
One of the things he said to me, he said, keep doing this one and I obey. I followed instruction. Mentors will save your life. They are not your mates. You may even be older than some of your mentors. But they carry something. Remember my definition of mentor to you last Sunday. They live where you are journey to. You, your aspiration is their experience. There is something this man of God has seen that I don't know about ministry. And it's counsel to me. And I, I told you also that instruction is your life. Preserve my life. The color you see today, which for me is still nothing anyway, maybe will not be there if I didn't find a mentor or I didn't follow his instruction. Because it's one thing for your mentor to tell you something and you disobey. And you need to know that every instruction from your mentor will save your life. Mentor don't give suggestion, they give instruction. You know, some of you, you come for counsel and say, Pastor, what's your suggestion? <laughs> your pastor does not give suggestion, he gives instruction. And instruction, he said, hold fast of instruction, for she is your life. He gave me an instruction that saved my life, saved me from error, made me stay on my assignment. And 2018, I've had different encounters with this pastor. Sometimes he will come and do things that he didn't tell me. One day he came to my office, my advert uh, I used to work in an advertising firm uh, that many years ago, and he asked me one very funny question. What is the structure of your fellowship? I told him, and he would do like this. Okay? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Only for us to, for him to get to resort in redemption camp that day. He called all the leaders, pour oil on me, and pray dangerous prayer. I think that was the first time somebody would lay hands on me and I will, I will sob. I don't know how many of you remember that encounter. We were all in that room. I was crying. Something heavy for what I'm doing right now came in that meeting. And that was the day my address changed from a brother to become a pastor. You know, my own ordination was inside a room. You know, Larry, your ordination, so much fun fair. Pastor did not give me any opportunity for inviting anybody. But something great, heavy for ministry, came upon me that day. You know, and different encounter with him. In 2018, he came again. He said, I would like to talk to all your leaders. I didn't know what he wants to say. I gathered all of you again in redemption camp. We went to one hotel within the redemption camp. And he said, we need to begin to look at the church part of this ministry. I don't know how many of you remember that. He began to tell us, church, church, church. church. And I said, okay. I, and in my own mind, I said, you told me in 2004, keep doing this thing. Now, the same man is coming to say something else. And I was wondering how do I reconcile? And I struggle with that word. And I said, okay, we'll do. Church one started in this place. They keep doing something in the morning. One year later, 2019, he came again in November into this auditorium. And as we were going in his car, he said, we need to give this a church face. Now, one thing about mentor, every joke of a prophet is a prophecy. They don't, do, they don't say careless word. Particularly when a man carried the kind of grace I know Pastor Shegon Kinsley carried. He said to me in the car, that was the only statement I had that November. He said, we need to give this we need to give this assignment a church face. We have entered the church face. And after that word, I went, I started praying intensely. It was that statement I heard from him that made me say, okay, dust all my vision notes, all my prophecy book, and I began to wake up the sleeping giant around me. All our pastors, and before you know it, we started praying, and we received the inspiration for what we call Island Church today. Praise the Lord. So everybody all over the world, wherever you are, I'm so glad that Pastor Shegun Kinsley is not joining us on Zoom this afternoon. Pastor Shegun Kinsley, I don't know how uh, the grace of Philip upon this man of God, how he beat the lockdown, I believe is for such a time as this. Uh, Pastor Shagun Kingsley is on our miss this afternoon, and he will be bringing us the Word of God live. My friends on Facebook, on YouTube, on Twitter, on Instagram, on MixLR, I want you all to get ready for an encounter of a lifetime. I present to you my pastor, 
my prophet, Pastor Shagun Kinsley, as he brings us the word of the Lord and blessing for Ireland Church. Father, we exalt you. Not because we want to depart or because we are in hurry to come. But that prophet says, My eyes have seen the awaited glory. Father, this day without an iota of doubt we are here to say our eyes have seen the glory being part. Thank you, Jesus for this day. Thank you, O oh Lord, for your help thus far. Thank you, Jehovah, for the part of a new thing. Thank you because even when your son did not know, when I didn't have an idea, you are orchestrating what you alone can orchestrate. We thank you for making us to be part of that fulfillment. Again, as you have shown the next phase, even as I sat in this place, I declare, O oh Lord, as a prophet over the house, that sooner than we expect, that journey that place on the high road on a major way that you are suddenly shown you will provide it you will pay for it you will build it so Lord that, that says we are not just more talking about inauguration anymore we're talking about the next phase because anything that you are not set to do, you don't show. Neither do you say that. But as you have said this, Lord, in the same way you begin to deal with me in July 2018, I was praying for my son and you begin to say some things. And even me, I begin to question how shall these things be? I remember saying that one day think that maybe Joseph, his son, has gone to bribe him behind or give him I had so many thoughts. But I think we've walked a little bit to know when you are set to do some things. So our heart rejoice today. Be glorified. Every word! That this ministry need to carry them on eagle's wings, deliver today Amen. to the glory and to the honor of your name. Amen. In Jesus' name, Amen. 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 Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. You may please be seated in this present. Congratulations to everybody. Congratulations, congratulations, congratulations. I want to appreciate every one of you here today. Um, honestly, 
we've agreed, like Pastor said, that we're going to do a Zoom meeting from London. In fact, on the day of your leaders' meeting, we agreed that we're going to have the meeting. And I was fully prepared. Then an urgent call came um, for us to be in Nigeria. So immediately we have to start looking for an approver to be able to fly into Nigeria, an approver to be able to get him um, so that they can be sure that we are COVID-19 free. <laughs> and so the day that I was doing the work workers the leaders meeting I was on the, in the car traveling to the airport and you know funny enough as we went into a tunnel and we came out I hear God expressly say to me that do I realize that even though there was a break in the transmission but that the program was unstoppable. I said yes Lord. So God said to me I am going to make this ministry unstoppable not unstoppable because anybody can stop it but because challenge will arise every ministry has challenge but gliding through the challenge will be with ease so i'm going to share with us very very briefly genesis chapter one it's amazing that it's, it's the beginning and we are going to be looking at the beginning as well yeah, even though I live in London, but I think your room is a bit cold. And everybody is shivering. Everybody is running away. So please reduce the thing. Even mommy stood up at a junction. Because it was getting cold. Hallelujah. So Genesis chapter 1. Let's get it straight. The Bible said in the beginning, God created heaven and earth. To all the leaders, to every member of this church, to everybody associated with this church, I am here to congratulate you. Because today is the beginning. And let me quickly say the word to you. Every one of us that knows the beginning of this ministry, who will not know the end. Maybe you didn't hear what I said. Bible said in the beginning God created heaven and earth. But then my prayer for you is that every one of us that witness the birth, the beginning of this ministry, we will not see the end in the name of Jesus. We will not know the end in the name of Jesus. Hope you know that some ministry do pack up. Oh, you are not aware. If you ask your pastor, and I know some of you are here, in the early 80s, not in the late 80s, there's a ministry. When they are having meetings, Stadium Road is blocked. They are, they are inside Surulere. But when they are having meetings, you, try, you dare not try to go near Ujo Elegba. When they close, you know, in Surulere, those days, uh, between Alaka and Stadium, just inside, when they close, you can't find a boss. It's called Zoe Ministry. Some of you possibly have known. Now, the problem is that they are not even, you can't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't even hear anything about them anymore. And if anybody tells us, those days, 
That is why ministry will not be existing anymore. <laughs> you possibly will laugh. Because in that time, those of us who are going to redeem, we are conservative Christians. The people that goes to deeper life, gospel faith mission, um, first square gospel church, we are the conservative Christianity. The main church then is Christ Chapel for everybody coming out of university. Then if you know that you want deliverance, there's no mountain of fire at all, then there's no mountain of fire. I mean, as the mountain of fire was not existing, they were still in CAC, in the booty matter, where the dad of um, the great man of God, Pastor Lukoya, used to be the general superintendent while he was the youth leader of, of the church then. There was no one to... So if you're talking of deliverance, that's the place. And you know people go for 21 days deliverance. So I prophesy over this church one more time. We know your beginning. We will not know your end in the name of Jesus. Now, when you look at that word, and, and if you looked at that Genesis, in Genesis chapter 1 verse 3, Genesis chapter 1 verse 6, Genesis chapter 1 verse 9, Genesis chapter 1 verse 11, Genesis chapter 1 verse 16, and I think verse 19 or 21, everything the Lord says there, and God said, so, it wasn't the fact that God went into one manufacturing setup. He didn't go and start putting blocks together. All that he did was that he spoke a word. And hear me, like your pastor said, like July, when he was busy enjoying his wife and eating pounded yam in his house, a body came on me. I didn't know this place. I didn't know you have a building. I know you know. I know you have a, a building, as a way. And like he said, you know, it's always on completed building. So when you say you have a building, as far as I'm concerned, I think you have a place where you just put some garments together and then nail and all that stuff. So it was okay. Well, as a prophet, I I hold him the family to be on my knees at all times. So one of those afternoons, I was praying and then. God said, you are going to father a church. That was the beginning of the word. I have had children. I, I have children all around the world. I still don't understand the kind of mystery about me. I've gone to my father in the Lord to go and ask him, Daddy, hope I'm not going into error. Because I'm under a church. Um, and I'm not planning to be a general overseer. It's never... God has not shown me that ministry, that, that word, and he can't show me that word. It's not possible, right? No, 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 I can't. But then, I have sons who are pastors. In fact, I have a church of a young guy in Ghana. One of my sons in U.S., who is a Ghanaian, brought him to me. Now, the, church, the guy took me to his church and then I suddenly realized that the guy is actually more than a general overseer on his own right. So when he now comes and says, God said you should come and submit to me, I say, ha. Sir, this is my, what you are seeing here. You know in London, when you have this place as a church, you are doing well. Hope you are aware. Your church is a cathedral. It doesn't mean there is no big church, but I'm, the pastor knows what I'm talking about. So, when a big man, well respected, say God is asking them to submit to me, I'm wondering. So, it's not, I'm not in want of people. I have a lot of children all around the world who have submitted, who are general in their own right. But when God now says you're going to father a church, it's only different thing when he says you're going to father a pastor. So, I, I got confused myself. And I knew God was, and I knew I was the one who I was talking about. But then, as God begins to unveil, so I suddenly realized that it's not the fact that somebody is coming to hand over to you, but a baby you are going to carry for your son. And so that takes me to the fact that this work is not a thought-out work. There are ministry 
that people think about. There are ministries that men of God feel that I carry grace. We have enough going for us. So let's start the work. I'm sure all of you know what I'm talking about. There are ministries that grows. If you know you are doing ministry, you are doing fellowship, it has grown to a level, and then all of a sudden you just feel like, well, this thing is grown. Let's do go ahead. Let's proceed. Let's progress. That will not be out of order if any of those things are falling in place. But in a word, proceed here. In the beginning, what happens to the beginning of this work is that it was a word that came forth. And that word was nurtured for five months before I could even put myself together to like know what God is saying clearly. A word. And when you look at Ezekiel chapter 12, verse 27 and 28, Ezekiel 12, 27 to 28, we need, actually need 27, 28, but let's, let's read from 27 to 28, Ezekiel. He said, son of man, behold, they are of the house of Israel. So the vision that that said is for many days to come. And he prophesied of the time that are far up. Verse 28 now says, everybody please join me to read verse, verse 28. Therefore, see it unto them, thus see the Lord. There shall none of my word be prolonged anymore, but the word which I have spoken shall be what? Shall be done. That means that God is saying, look, listen to me. Concerning this church, every word that I have spoken before now, it shall no more be what? No more be prolonged. Concerning your own life, concerning your destiny, every word the Lord God of heaven has said concerning you in the time past, they shall no more be what? Prolonged. Come on, say to yourself, say, Father, Father, I bless your holy name because your word will no more be prolonged in my life. Every word of prophecy, every word spoken concerning my destiny, every word spoken concerning my future, it shall come to pass now. Every word spoken concerning island the church, every word spoken concerning the island church, it shall no more be prolonged. It shall no more be prolonged. So now what are these words? One of the word God of heaven has spoken that is asked me to deliver to you is found in the book of Matthew chapter 16 verse 18, a scripture that you all know. Talking about the prevailing power of the word spoken for every church. But for this hour, it becomes an emblem. It becomes a flag that heaven is raising for you. Matthew, the 16th chapter. Matthew. And he says, he said, I say unto thee, thou art island church. Upon this rock, I will build island church. And the gate of hell shall not what? Shall not prevail against it. Hear me, sir. I am here to announce to you the gate of building, gate of space, gate of place to express the vision of God over your life. The gate of a building that churches don't have that normally limits growth. The overseer should tell you both you and the children that are going to come out of this ministry. The gate of hell of building shall not prevail in the name of Jesus. Amen. What normally limits ministries in life is finances. I am here to announce to you, son, that the gate of hell of finances, of membership, of, 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 of disunity, they will not prevail against this church in the name of Jesus. Amen. Whether from the pit of hell, whether by man. No gate, no gate, no gate. No gate will prevail against this work. So what's the word again? He has given a general word. But then he now gave a word for what we are starting today. And that word you find in Philippians chapter 1. Philippians the first chapter. And the sixth verse, the Philippians, the first chapter, and 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 and, and, and the sixth verse. And what did he say here? He said, "Being confident of this very thing, that he which had begun a good work in you, we 
perform it unto what? Until the day of Jesus Christ. I am happy to announce to you Highland Church. That the Lord God of heaven who have begun. He who have begun. Who have begun. A good work in you. Will make it performers. We bring a performer. Not only in your lifetime. Until the day. Of Jesus Christ. That's one of the word. It's a word for his time. He said, what? You are starting the work today. God said, I should tell you, be of good cheer, be good confident, be of good confident. Because he who has begun a good work, a good work, a good work. There is a man who has begun a good work. That man is called Jesus. And he said, until the appearing of Jesus, the good work I am starting, we have no end in your life. Amen. Number two. Talking about the word, the spoken word that you have said concerning you. You know what? Um, you know when your son is good or when God is helping your son, you must acknowledge it. You know the day your pastor told me that you are 200 members that are praying. I said, ah, if I have 20 members to start praying. I mean, and I said to myself, well, because, again, like he said, does he listen to instruction? He listened to instruction. He came to me, he said, we want to start. I said, what are you starting? Uh, we are looking at starting in March. I said, who says? You says or I say? He said, uh, by our timetable. I said, sir, there's no timetable. You have not even prayed. Go back. Let's go and be praying. It's not because he's here. And he said, yes, sir. He said, how many days? I said, be praying. And, and, and as you understood, I said, at least minimum, we must pray for four, three weeks. But let's even be praying. And at that time, I didn't know there was going to be a pandemic. I didn't know. I said, just be praying. He said, sir. I said, ah, go on, just be praying. When we finish, when we are praying, when we are soaked the ground enough. So he called me one day. He said, sir, we have this number of people praying. I said, praise God, let's continue. Let's continue. And then, does it not amaze you that God now work it out prophetically? Hope you know that 120 is not a number of man. Oh, you're not aware? That's the number of completeness of God. That will not permit me. Everything ends in 12. Every season ends in 12. 12 months, the year is over. 12 hours, the day changes. So anytime you have 12, a season is done with. It's a number of completion. So what you are saying is that when you have done a 120 days praying and fasting, you have soaked over a complete season that has no ending. So it's not accident. It's not accident. It's not accident. The last time he told me, and I'm like, you this guy, God just love you. Yeah, because the truth of the matter is that you know that if they told you we are going to pray for 120 days, Pastor Nii, would you agree? And you would say, we didn't kill Jesus Christ. And we do more than starting a ministry. Just a land judge. What, what did what happen? What did we kill? 120 days? For what? I mean, it doesn't add up. Even I feel I am a prayer person. If you tell me 120 days, Pastor Andrew, I will tell you. Uh, confess who how many pregnant did you abort that we want to pray for 120 days? Confess I mean, I, I, who, who did we offend? Are we the one that killed Jesus? But then look at what God has did. Look at what God has done. Look at what God has done. Make a seasonal change perfect. Meaning that for this church, no season. Can waver you anymore? Yeah. That one doesn't even need me because it has been done already. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, on you, thank you, sir. Now, he now says, now the truth of the matter is the fact that 200, trust me, is a big number, massive number. But permit me to please disappoint you that Job chapter 8, verse 7, that what you can as well said is a good start. God said that it's a small thing. And he said that that's 200 and something that started. God said it's a beginning. And no beginning is great. This is a small beginning. 
compared to where God is taking you. And I hear God says to me that despise not the day of what? Of little beginning. And he says in that Job chapter 8, even though your beginning is what? Is small. You are even though you start with 200, you are latin. You are latin. No, the Bible did not say, we are only cloak, uh, close, um, quote that scripture. Say that your latter hand will be. No, 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 that's not. Bible said, your latter hand should be greatly increased. Meaning that you are not left with an option. You don't understand? <laughs> yeah, Mio. I have seen your start. I knew your beginning. But look at me. There's only one option available for you, sir. There's only one option available for this child. It should greatly, I am not giving you an option. It should greatly, you don't have a sense in this one. It should greatly do what? Increase. And Proverbs 4, 18 says, the path of the righteous, the path of a highland church, which adjusts, it shines more and more. And that scripture says, brighter and brighter. Unto what? A perfect day. That's the start. So hear me, sir. Before the foundation, which is what everybody needs to build a church, God gave a word. I will build my church. And then the gate of hell shall not prevail. That's the foundational word. Now, the starting of the war says that being confident of this thing, that he who has begun a good work, Philippians 1, 6. And then in, 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 in Proverbs 4, 18, that the path of the just shines bright and brighter, shines better and better, shown wide and wide, Utenian Bible. It says, shown wider and wider. Unto the appearing of the perfect day. And he didn't finish there. He says in Job 8 that though your starting, your beginning is small, your latter hand should be great. Now you know, say now, now that you have started, now that you are starting, here is the word in the start. Micah chapter 4, verse 1 to 2. Micah chapter 4. Verse 1 to 2. Pastor, you please give me a little bit of a time, the more so that I can go through this. Bible says in Micah, and I want everybody to please, who is here to read with me, all our members in, 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 on, 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 on YouTube, on, on Instagram, IG, on all social media and handle. Please join me to read this. One, two, we go. But in the last day, it shall come to pass that the mountain of the house of the Lord shall be established. On what? On what? What's the name of your church? So Bible says that the mountain of the house of the Lord shall be established where? No, 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 no. Oh, we are? You are in the spirit, sir. Because your wife is sitting there beside you. You know when a man has a good wife, he just, uh, he, he sees right vision. Okay, let's go again one more time. But in the last day, it shall come to pass that the mountain of the Lord shall be established where? In Ireland church. And it shall be what? He shall be exalted above the hill. And what will happen? People shall flow into it. Everybody please join me to read verse 2 louder. Verse 2, quickly. And Bible said, how many person? I, I can hear you church. Mind you, we are started already. This is what happened when we had already started. Bible said, and many nations shall do what? Shall come. So the whites will come. The Caucasian will come. The Africans will come. The West African will come. The East African will come. We will go to all the nations of the world. Bible said, and many nations shall come. And when they come, they will say, Come, let us go where? To Island Church, to the house of Jacob. And he will teach us his way. And we will walk in his path. For the Lord shall go forth of Zion. And the word of the Lord from Highland Church. 
So these are the events that the word that have been given to me to speak over the life of this church. These are the word. You have started. There's a foundation. After the foundation, he said to you, this was started in your event. Now, since you have now started, these are the cumulative effect of what you're going to be seeing. And please mark my word. I am not here just to say this. I am saying this prophetically as the spirit of the Lord has dropped in my heart and has instructed me to see. Because as I speak also to my son for instruction, I also instruction, receive instruction even from my own fathers. Then, in Ezekiel 36, happening once the church has taken off after today, completely. These are the events that will be happening. Ezekiel 36, let's start from 33 to 37. Ezekiel 36, 33. Thus said the Lord, in the day that I will cleanse you from all iniquities, and I will cause you to dwell in the city, and the waste shall be built. Go ahead, go ahead. We're going to 37. And the desolate land shall be what? Shall be tilted. Whereas it lay desolate in the sight of all that passed by. Verse 35 now says, And they shall say, The land that was desolate is become like what? Like the garden of Eden. Now you know what happened in the garden of Eden. And so, hear me, hear me, folks. Hear me, folks. God is taking you to a place, to a land that looks abandoned. God is taking you to a city, to a nation that looks abandoned. And by the time you get there, Highland Church, you're going to be turning every, every land, every land that has been ruined, every wasteland, you are going to be turning them into a garden of because mind you, in Garden of Eden, what takes place in Garden of Eden? What takes place in Garden of Eden is power of creation. So you get to a place where there is void and formless. You begin to create. You get to a place where nobody sees things before. You begin to bring new things out. And when you bring those new things out, you will be the one to begin to give them names. Hope you are following this one. Prophetically. It's not preaching. That's why I told you of your father when he says that you want to come and record this. I'm like, no, sir. Let's, let's, let's do it the way it ought to be done. Get back. That's our scripture. Get back. Verse 35. And Bible said, and, and the land that was desolate will become like the garden of Eden. And the waste and the desolate and the ruined city have become fenced and inhabited. Everybody join me to read verse 36 to 37 together. Then the hidden that are left round about shall know that I the Lord will build the ruined place and plant them that are desolate. I the Lord have spoken it. I will do it. Everybody read 37 out loud together. Then thus hear the Lord God. I will yet for this be inquired of by the house of Israel. Do it for them. And I will increase them with men. Like so, so I'm God says to tell you, I am going to do something that is beyond your capacity. It's not a function of how many years you have been in ministry. It's not a function of what you have done or what you have not done, what you are commissioned with. He said, when I start what I want to start, when I begin to do it, men will come to inquiry of you. Men will come to inquiry about you. Is it normal for this to happen? And then I will do things that I will cause men. <coughs> I will add men to you like flocks. Sir, he didn't say like shepherd. He didn't say like sheep. Sorry, he said like flocks. Sir, when you say flocks, that means that people don't join the church in trickles. Oh, you don't understand. En mass. Yes, sir. A force, a head of people. You will be doing one Sunday service Sunday, and you're going to have like about fifty people Amen. saying we are joining today. Amen. You are going to. He said, "I we had men." To them, like what? Like flocks. Hallelujah. Like flocks. Now, these are the things you are going to be expressed. So, I hope all you, the leaders, are writing it down. Because it's not just that I'm here to prophesy. No, 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 no. no. I am here to tell you the mind of God. It's not preaching. It's not preaching. 
No, 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 no. It's not preaching. It's just the mind of God. It's not the mind of God. It's not the mind of God. Why do that thing that will happen as, as this ministry proceed? Zechariah chapter 2. Zechariah, the second chapter. We're going to read from verse 2 to the fifth verse. Zechariah, the second chapter. Zechariah, the second chapter. Everybody, let's read together. Then said I, whither thou goest? And he said to me, to measure island church, to see what is the breadth thereof, and what is the length thereof. Then I'll go to verse 3 to 5. He said, then behold, the angel that talked with me went forth, and another angel went out to meet him. So what did he say when he went to go and meet him? He now said it to him in verse 4, verse 5. He said, then said unto him, Run, speak to the young man that we said he should go and measure the city. Go and tell him, saying, Jerusalem shall be inhabited as a town without war for the multitude of men and cattle you dear him. Verse 5 now says, For I see the Lord will be a wall of fire round about and will be glory in the midst. You know, God said to that man in verse 1, he said, go and measure the wall of Jerusalem. As the guy and the angel was running, Bible said another angel came and said, where are you going, gentlemen? He said, I want to go and measure the length and the breadth of Jerusalem. He said, no, 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 no. That was the former order. That was the former instruction. We are men are able to count. We are men are able to build a wall around the church. We are men are able to put a wall around the church. In fact, permit me to say, I don't know whether this is one of the secrets of my father of building church with a wall. So the Bible says, he says to them, hear me? Don't, don't, don't measure. You can only measure what can be counted. You can only measure what has a number. He said, but hear me, go and tell them in Highland the Church, in Highland Church, that I will be the wall round about them. They will be a church without war, without war. And a church without war is a church that lost counts of members. Lastly, the things that you're going to be seeing. Even as this work move forward, as I now said, the final one that the Lord God of heaven has said, asked me to say, Ezekiel chapter 47. We're going to do a bit of a long reading there. As we read, you will understand. Ezekiel 47. You know, you know, I was talking to one of my sons sometimes last year. Is it last year or the last year? I think I was going to the mountain, so. And we have a challenge in this church. I said, let's go to the mountain. He said, that do you go? He said, that's where you are, my father. I'm like, oh, God, this is your ministry, your church. Yeah, but I, I know you are praying. I've, I've had countless encounters with you. And so, that's so much persuasion. He followed me. As we are climbing, told me, sir, I didn't kill anybody. <laughs> I don't know whether you killed, but for me, I didn't kill anybody. How many days are we spending here? I said, as long as we hear God. He said, no, sir, as I finish climbing, you will escort you up. When you get up and you are set to, I'm coming down. I said, why? He said, I will sleep on the mountain. I'm not the one that killed Jesus. And then, you know, and we joked. We, we, we joked like Pastor said. We joked, so I laughed. And as I was going down, I hear God clearly follow him. God, we came here to set your matter. Don't make me a useless father. <laughs> they said Annapolis that has, his son died during the daytime. What is going to be his excuse? <laughs> then you pray and you fast you go to the mountain and here is this your son God said follow him I just wanted him to climb in the climbing 
I have sorted him out. <sighs> he said, but God, all these why that have been coming, why don't you also tell me, in one of my climbing, <laughs> that as soon as I land there, I should also go down, that I have been sorted out. But he has says to me that if you must hear the inaudible, and you must hear on behalf of the ones that have given unto you. You need to enter the place where they are not entering. So this day, like I said to your pastor during the week, we're supposed to have an arrangement. So I begin to pray. And I felt something was missing. So I called him, sir. Please, sir. I know you are the general overseer of uh, Island Church. I'm a member of Island Church. But please, sir, can we do it this way? I'm sorry, sir. You know, we don't talk to our general overseer anyhow. <laughs> but thank God the general overseer still knows he has a father. So he said, Daddy. And then, this word I'm about to give to you came forth. So let me quickly give you one of the word of God. <sighs> Sorry, this may be hard for you, Joseph. You have limited time here. I know you told me last year you intend to buy this place over and possibly look for some other churches. Now, God did not say to me that will not be possible. God did not say to me you are not buying or you will buy. I didn't hear that. But this is meant to be the place where the commission will take place. But sir, you would be enjoying the ministry if we stay too long here. Clearly, God is going to make you affect this environment no doubt. You are going to impart these people. No doubt. But the future, you are going to leave a branch here, so it's not a problem. So among your sons now, begin to look for the ones who is ready to take over the baton of this place. Or anywhere you get here. Um, but there is a place that you must, from Monday, start looking. And, and I, I remember me saying to God, the Lord, they're just starting money. God said, if I tell him that he will know that everything that he has done in his life, there has never been a money sitting down. But he has never been stranded. And when this one comes to, he will raise men. In fact, I hear God says to me that there's a way that he will bless people around you in the period not a man. He has, he has been doing it. One time you needed to do some things. What God said to me, so that you have not told me this before, so you, at least you will know that your father here from God. God said to me that sometimes when you need, when I normally die, bless the people around you. And it's in that period, they see the hand of God. And God said that that season is going to come again very soon um, that God is going to put some, some dangerous finance into the house of some people so that they work can get to his place. And even that place where you are going is going to be big enough, but it's not even going to be the place. Um, okay. We leave the remaining for now. Um, but I'm going to please ask God to, God said to, I should tell you, in fact, God said to me that very soon I should start praying for you for humility. Because the only thing that can stop you is yourself. So that when you are felt and you are full, you won't see yourself in the place of God. Ezekiel 47, verse 1 to 10. <clears throat> After what you brought me again, unto the door of the house, behold, what I issue out of under the threshold of the house eastward, for the foremost of the house stood towards the east. The water came down from underneath the right side of the house at the side side of the altar. Verse 2. We're going to verse 10. Let's go. Let's run. Then brought me he out of the way of the gate northward 
led me about the way without the altar gate unto the high altar gate by the way that look at eastward and behold there ran out waters on the right side now please pastor Jesus be sensitive enough to know whatever God is saying to you here I'm going to give you a word to the church, but there's a word for you here that you must receive by yourself. And when the man that had the line in his hand went forth eastward, he measured a thousand cubits and he brought me through the water. The water where I had my hand and on the water. Go ahead, sir. They said unto me, the water issued out towards the east country. East country. East country, East country, East country, and go down into the desert, go into the sea, which being brought forth into the sea, the water shall be healed. And it came to pass that everything that liveth, which moveth, whichsoever the river comes, wheresoever, whithersoever. The river shall come, shall leave. I repeat again. And it came to pass that everything that liveth, which moveth, whatsoever the river shall come. We are with us so ever. Sorry, the river shall come, shall leave. And there shall be a very great multitude of fish. Because this water shall come to them, for they shall be healed. And everything shall live whither the river comets. Deep collect onto the deep. So wherever Highland Church is, there shall be healing. Wherever Highland Church flows to, the dead in the environment, the dead in the circumstances shall heal. Wherever Highland Church is, as the Lord God of heaven liveth, every life that comes in touch with Highland Church, they shall receive a new life. A new life. A new life. I said, a new life. And lastly, the word that I am set to do as I finish my work here this afternoon or the first phase before I enter the second one is that not only are we going to start this work, but this work will be endorsed by heaven. I can't hear him and to talk. I repeat again, for adventure, you didn't hear me. Not only are we going to start this work, not only have we started this work, but this work that we started today shall be endorsed by the heavens. John chapter 1. John, the gospel according to St. John. There's a mystery about endorsement. The, the scripture says that it is not all that are called that are chosen. Not all that are chosen are predestined. Not all that are predestined are glorified. There are people who are the call. The call ones that even called by himself. He did not, he will not only call them, he goes ahead to justify the call. Not only does he justify, sir, as a matter of fact, the call one are the predestinated one. They are predestined to do what they are coming into. They are predestined to do what they are doing. They are predestined to achieve greatness in life. That is not given to everybody. It is when you are predestinated to achieve a purpose. 
Then you become the called. A lot of people hear call. If I come here and say, somebody there, I will have two, three people run to this altar. But you know, I can tell those two, three people that came and said, you are not the one I'm calling. Well, because they are not the call. But when heaven suddenly make you the call, what it does is that it predestinates you for a particular assignment. And when that assignment is about to be long, he make mention of your name. Don't say, oh, look, I come forward. So you become the call. And hear me, sir. When you become the call, sir, it does not matter how you do it, you are justified. It doesn't matter. If you bend down, and then we say, well, when he bend down, if he didn't bend down, he wouldn't have been able to achieve it. If you fall down by mistake, they say we needed him to go through that route. Rise up so that he can achieve what he needed to achieve. If you, if you soliloquize where you are going, they say without the soliloquizing, that purpose will not be achieved. It does not matter. You are not, you are not the one who are going to work it out. You have already been justified. Yes. 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 Talking about the endorsed one. Then when he justifies you, he glorifies you. You can't fail. Mm. Mm. If you are the call, they justify. You just got to be glorified. It does not matter what you are selling. If heaven has ordained you to make it in life, so I sell charcoal. God will ensure that everybody on earth begins to need charcoal. Everybody. And until they have, until all the billionaires have come to finish buying your charcoal, nothing happens. When you have become a billionaire and God knows he has done what he wants to do, all of a sudden, other people begin to sell charcoal. The called are the ones that he justified. And when you are the call, sir, pastor, what happened is that whatever is calling you to, he had endorsed you for it even before you know anything about it. So Joseph, hear me, sir. Pastor Joseph, hear me, sir. You were not the one that called yourself into this assignment. But not only are you called, sir, you were called with an endorsement. And, and sir, so you know what an endorsement is? Nike comes and said, well, man, you, whether you win tournament or not, whether you are going to mess up this year, this season, or not, whether Liverpool will win, and you'll be number six on the league table or not. We are putting our endorsement on you. Carry our name. We are our name. It does not matter the outcome of the season. Oh, you're not here. Yes, sir. It does not matter whether you fail or whether you win. We have seen something in you. Nobody is meant to carry our logo but you. So carry this logo and go. An endorsement. So no wonder John chapter 1 verse 34 to 36. John said, Bible said that, he said, he said the one you see the spirit ascending and descending. He said the same is the one. The same is the one. John 1 34 to 36. And Bible said, and as soon as John saw him, Bible said, and I saw, and I bear record that what? This is what? The son of God. 35 and 36, sir. <clears throat> Again, the next day, after John stood, and two of his disciples looking upon Jesus as he walked and said, Behold the what? The lamb. Now, nobody gave them the name ahead of time. It was an endorsement. Now, ma, that endorsement does not come because my daughter Tinuka is the pastor's wife. No, 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 no. There's an endorsement from heaven. 
You don't be the one to come and tell people this is whom you are. People just see you and then they bring forth a name. Island Church, hear ye the word of the Lord. Island Church, hear the word of the Lord. I see God putting an endorsement over you, over you. Making an endorsement coming upon you as a career. An endorsement, an endorsement, an endorsement. An endorsement. <laughs> With an endorsement. If you laugh, somebody will say, I went to that church today. <laughs> My sister, say, say, I went to that church today. You need to see the laughter there. Even though your laughter is fake, even you that is doing the laugh, you knew that your laughter is what? Fake. Oh, you don't understand. Fake. You knew that this laughter is an aristocrat's laugh. You didn't get anywhere. But when there's an endorsement, Pastor Andrew will say, Pastor Larry will say, I went to that church. You need to see the way the pastor is laughing. You need to see how all the lieutenant of the pastor, when they saw their pastor laughing, they begin to pick up the laughter. The laughter was just going and going and I mean, I mean, I have never seen a joyful church like that in my life. That is my church. Now, when they come back and they say to you, the, the reason why I want to bless the name of the Lord for bringing me into this church, and the reason why the Lord I just just lay on my heart to be a member of this church is that I was here last week Sunday and I saw the pastor and the pastor's wife, and I saw the way they are smiling, and, and I can see a joy from. And then the pastor will look at his wife. Which laughter? And then he will look at his wife. You and I. We knew how we left house this morning. Which laughter? But then why? There's an endorsement. There's an endorsement. You know, I was saying to some of my children recently that some of the things I know in ministry, I wish I knew it in 1990s. I would have done things differently. You know, I was praying then, but I was not praying with understanding. Sir, I would have done things differently, sir. Fantastically differently. Because you know what? Haven't you asked yourself, when you listen to some preacher, their church is full. But there's nothing. There's nothing. It's just motivational talk that they read from one book. Billy Carey. Becoming yourself, believing in yourself, and they use one, two faith scripture to support it. And then that's the whole thing they will say. Pastor, if they gave you a microphone, you will have scattered the whole church. They will have been saying, Wow, see anointing. But, sir, the difference between you and them is that somebody has been endorsed for what he's doing. And when that endorsement comes, so, sir, here is the word, sir. Stop looking for power. No, 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 no. It's no more time. You know, we have done all those power that we were looking for those years. It's okay, sir. Leave power. When there's an endorsement, eh, the one who is endorsing you, we bring the power, the anointing, the great, everything. The moment he brings an endorsement, every other thing that you will need is none of your business. So stop looking for your, like your father, who is going to the mountain. Endorsement. And that's what I'm releasing all over all my children all around the world now. Endorsement. I caught that scripture. I said, but God, why, why did you allow me to go through these things? Because God said to me, because of the people I'm going to put into your hands. Ah, because I suffered in ministry. No, the picture you saw there was still good. You saw, the picture he, he came in 1994, Abby. Pray that you never set eyes on 1989, 1990, 1991, 1992 picture. If you set eyes on that scripture, you can say you are not going to become. Hey! That was a very good one, the 1994 one. Even though I saw it, I put my hands on my head. But that was a good one. Endorsement. 
You know, you know when, when, you know, you are football fans. I'm not, I'm not one either. You know when there's an endorsement? Those people, they, they buy your kids? Yeah. Abi? Yeah. Am I like that? Yeah. They give you money? Even to, speech, sir? Even, Even what? Yes, sir. Everything. Because why? You carry them. You carry them. So, sir, let's not be running up and down. Run for the endorsement. 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 In the last seven days, that's the only word God of heaven has put in my mouth. And that's what I've been laying on your life, on your ministry. Endorsement. Because you know what? When it happens, you... In fact, people will think that you have fasted like your father, and not all the glucose on your head that's dried up. But they didn't know you don't fast. When you come out and say, Whoosh! and people begin to say, they say, if you see anointing today, endorsement. No wonder the book of Mark, chapter 1. <clears throat> Mark, chapter 1. Verse 9, possibly to 11 or 12. Mark the first chapter. Bible said, and it came to pass in that day that Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized, and was baptized of John in Jordan. Verse 10 says, and straight away, coming out of the water, he saw the heavens open and the spirit like a dove descending upon him. Verse 11 says, and straight away, a voice from heaven saying, Thou art my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. Pastor, this is what sorted it out for Jesus. This is what sorted it out. Pastor, Nhi. Pastor Andrew, this is what sorted it out. Sir, the contending that Woman of God, the contending that people were contending with Jesus, man, was not a contention of his person. Mm -mm. Because it was God who endorsed him by himself. Ma, uh, mommy, the contention that they had with Jesus was that they can't comprehend that the son of Joseph is telling them he's the son of God. It was too much. That, you know, I, I, you, know <laughs> you don't understand. They knew his father. Now, the problem is that his father is not one of the top end clones of the society. The guy was just a carpenter. A small shed. The new his mother, who is supposed to be one of the disgraced virgin in the city. And then one boy from that, from that humble background, whom his parents could not pay the hospital bill when he was given birth to. So they had to go and give birth to him. We are animals. Now it's, it's okay when you have come with a pedigree. When we can read some profiling about you. And then you tell us this is who you are and we check your profile. And it's alright. But guess what? No profile. No pedigree. Sir, no resume. And then the guy who has no resume came and said I'm the son of God. Now that was a contention. But the contention, now the problem is this. Sir. When there's a contention, it's not a function of contention or no contention. It's a function of endorsement. <laughs> so, once there's an endorsement, eh? whether you achieve or you don't achieve, because the one who is coming to endorse you, even the headly endorsement, they sign a certain year. They can't say because you have failed now. Mind you has not won any title or whatever, whatever, major, no champions league, nothing whatsoever. Knight has not gone back from there. AON, they still carry their jersey. In fact, they are still, sir, they are not winning any league, but they are still the richest team in the whole world. Endorsements. When it comes over the life of a church and ministry, things change. And I said, bow my knees before the throne of grace. For Highland Church, I ask for an endorsement. Italian de Kesurida 
Sheki kurimunda satali nde yaba. Ikente korumunta liki to sende ya. For Highland Church, I ask for an endorsement. Nindila da tulidiga telelele di dede. E kurimunda la tu sirigiba antele lulika karuya. Moromo koshuri kabalo se telinda rumukukala ya dayaba. For Highland Church, I ask for endorsement. In the name of God the Father. Amen. Endorsement. In the name of God the Son. Endorsement. In the name of God the Holy Spirit. Amen. So shall it be. Amen. In Jesus' name. the works of your hand come over this ministry comes upon your life endorsement of heaven over everyone who are parts of this commission and I pray that in this commission you will not be put to shame May the heaven back up this commission. Whatever you ask to go, we go. Whatever you ask to come, will come. Life that comes in contact with you will be turned around for greatness in the name of Jesus. The mandate from heaven will become evident in your life. Amen. In the name of God the Father, endorsement. In the name of God the Son endorsement in the name of God the Holy Spirit endorsement and I ask that the mandate of God over your life over the commission of God upon the life of your husband as you join hands together for this work you will never be put to shame Amen. daughter I pray for you great grace Amen. it's been said 
by some women of God that they only honor my pastor, my husband. They don't honor me. That will not be your lot. Men that goes and run around the pastor and despise the wife, they will not come near you. In the same garment of honor, because Bible says he that made them from the beginning, made them male and female. The same garment of honor that your husband carry. I put upon you this day in the name of God the Father. I put upon you today in the name of God the Son. I put upon you in the name of God the Holy Spirit. And Lord, at this hour, I ask that you will please take charge. Joseph Atinuke I speak for to the foundation of your life the womb that bats you I speak for to that womb the umbilical cord that tie you to your mother I speak for to it the day that you are giving birth to and that they carried you from the blood. The hand that carried you from the blood. I speak for to it. The first cry that came out of your mouth. I speak for to it. The day that you put your first feet on the ground. I speak for to it. And I declare this day that every move you move as from this hour concerning Island Church, it shall lead you to greater heights. So shall it be. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Give him praise, give him praise, give him praise, give him praise, give him praise. Give him glory, give him glory.
It's a reality in my lifetime. What a privilege. And he speaks well into our understanding with the way our Father kept it up now when there's an endorsement. And he started with a prayer when he started his ministration. And he said prophetically that we have seen the beginning of Island Church. None of us will see the end. In the name of Jesus. It simply means that hundred years to come where you and I will have gone, Island Church will be speaking across the globe. And so shall it be. In the name of Jesus. What are we doing today? What we have done today is simply to release blessing to our father. And it's good to have a father. And we are proud to have one in the house. He has blessed us. And when the prophetic blessing is released like this, what you do is to seal it. So it's time to seal it with your offering, with your giving. Luke chapter 6 verse 38. It says, give, it shall be given unto you. Good mayor, pressed down, shaking together and running over, shall men give unto your bosom. For with the same mayor that ye met with her, it shall be. Whatever it is that you want, so should be the mayor what you will give. If you look at Proverbs 18 verse 16, he said, a man gift maketh room for him and bringeth him before great man. You want to stand in the committee of greatness, then give. And that is why I want you to package your offering. Yeah, it is going to help me to project uh, the church account uh, and as well as the church code. So you can either use the code or you use the church account. It's going to be a Kingston bank account. Uh, it's going to be Naira and the domiciliary. Uh, you also can also use your, the short code to give your offering. While we are packaging the offering, it's already on the screen. While you are packaging the offering, I want to get us acquainted with our services going forward. Now that we have been blessed, that we have released, our first service kick off here tomorrow in the name of Jesus. I so hope somebody is excited. You put your hands together for Jesus. But don't come to church. All the service is going to be via our social media handle. Via our social media handle, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter. And it's the same, the same name, Church for Simplicity at HL Church NG. And you can also connect us via our website www.islandchurch.com.ng. All through this face various media we'll be transmitting, we'll be having our services. But our conventional service is going to be first service 9 a.m. every Sunday. The second service will be 1 p.m. But for now during this uh, lockdown and restriction we'll be having one service and we'll be broadcasted all across our social media. Just connect and be blessed in the name of Jesus. Our midweek service is slated for every Thursday, 6 p.m. Join us. It's going to be a communion service. And as you partake of this, the Lord will bless you in the name of Jesus. I'm sure many of us, we are giving our offering. And wherever you are, you can use that your instrument of, of, of offering. Lift it up. Maybe you have used your phone, you have used your device. Or it's in your hand. Lift it up as we bless it. Father, in the name of Jesus. We thank you for the grace you have given unto us. We thank you for the privilege to be a partaker of this grace. I remember one of the things our father said this afternoon. He said that one of the gates of hell against ministry is finance. But for Island Church, that will not be a problem in the name of Jesus. For as many and, and devices that are lifted up this afternoon, we we'll pray with one accord. Every form of financial embarrassment and disgrace comes to an end in our life in the name of Jesus. By this offering, many that are connected this afternoon will move from low level to high level in the name of Jesus. Thank you, faithful Father. We give you all the glory. For in Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. I want you to set, uh, get ready to celebrate God as we invite our choir to give us a special hymn. God bless you. I'm pressing on the upward way, new heights and gain. In every day, still praying as I onward bound. 
Oh, 
sweet on cane Nurse, take the land On higher plane Then I have found Lord, plant my feet On higher Praise the Lord. So we're going to bring this uh, wonderful inauguration to a close. It's been a great meeting and we want to give God praise. We thank him for his grace upon our life, his blessing into our life. Praise the Lord. Right now I'm going to just say appreciation to uh, those who've been part of this dream and this success story. This afternoon, I'd like to start by thanking our spiritual father, uh, my mentor and prophet, Pastor Shegun Kingsley. Pastor, thank you so much. We, we appreciate you. We thank you. We, we thank you for your impartation upon our life. The grace of God upon you will be on the increase, sir. In the name of Jesus. We celebrate you. Island Church celebrates you. Those of us in the studio, can we appreciate Pastor? We celebrate you, sir. We, we really honor you. We appreciate you. In this, in this time of uh, uh, people sitting at home, we thank God for the grace of God upon your life to still find time uh, to be here. We appreciate you, Pastor. We honor you. And um, uh, we know... You can be here if not that um, our mother in Israel, mother in Israel, city of David, that fort. She's watching somewhere now and laughing at me. Praise the Lord. Yesterday night she called me online pastor. He said, I'm everywhere, I'm Instagram, Facebook. Uh, and I, I told her I'm following after her footstep. Even from before pandemic, she was doing online ministration. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So, Mama, we celebrate you all my friends and the brothers sisters in city of david that fort we celebrate you i'm sure you can see your pastor is here we are taking care of your pastor um she will, he, will, he will come back home very soon i'm sure but pastor is doing bible study online they are enjoying it i think i still be in nigeria there's still one more meeting sir we as by arrangement <laughs> praise the lord all right, so Pastor, we celebrate you. I also want to say a big thank you to my wife, Atinoke Aborowa. I want to say thank you to this great woman of God and our children for tolerating me. Uh, let me confess, yesterday I didn't sleep at home. Today I'm not sleeping at home because, uh, and they know. Praise the Lord. We shall see tomorrow evening. So I want to appreciate them for uh, tolerating their husband and their father. You know, uh, I'm not a runaway father, but for the assignment in our hand, we have to hibernate from time to time in places, in preparation for the great task. How many of us really enjoy this service? We give God praise for a seamless inauguration. Uh, I didn't see any buffering online at all. Nobody complained. God answers prayer. <laughs> Even my six-year-old Joseph, he said, Island Church inauguration, the internet will not misbehave. The internet will work well. Everything will work well. <laughs> so, God answers prayer. And we give him all the glory. We celebrate uh, the grace of God upon this commission. So I celebrate my family. 
I want to thank the CEC members, the Central Executive members, uh, Pastor Nii Yoshusoya, Pastor Andrew Akinduro, Pastor Larry Omojowu, Pastor Kende Odunlami. Uh, I want to thank you, Lord. I want to thank Pastor Shola Degbenro in absentia. I want to thank all of you for your support, for your prayers. I appreciate you all. I also want to say all the wives of our CC members, I thank you. I, I, I appreciate all of you for the good work you are doing. If not for your support, all the CC members will not be shining. You are doing a good job. Keep it up. And we all celebrate you. We want to say a big thank you to all the pastors of Island Church. The pastors of Island Church who are not here, I had to do a special appeal overnight and early this morning that all of you should sit at home. And all of you are watching from home. Thank you so much. We thank all our directors. We thank our Zona cell leaders. We have cell meetings already. We thank all our cell leaders uh, and their wives. We want to say a big thank you. I want to uh, help me appreciate them. Let's just appreciate all these great leaders. I celebrate all of you from wherever you're watching. God bless you all. We want to thank the 240 powerhouse members. You have been praying since March 14. We thank you for your tenacity. Thank you for your patience. We have shifted the inauguration date because of the pandemic, but you kept on. And I saw the fire on the increase. And tonight is our day 120. Tonight, God has answered our prayer. Amen. Praise the Lord. So it's a Thanksgiving night. It's a special night, and you know about it. 8.30 tonight, we shall be meeting to thank God for 120 days of intercession and praying for this ministry. Then we move to the next phase of the assignment. On spiritual matter, there is no vacation. Uh, you don't stop today and think uh, it's all done. We have to continue. That mountain Pastor Shegun talked about, we have to climb it. Uh, we stay there. Uh, today we have re received endorsement. Uh, where, where is, but you know you have to sustain endorsement. Okay, the day Manchester United, because Pastor Shegun has gone to my area, the day Manchester United become Norwich, Nike will withdraw endorsement. Once you go, once you leave that uh, premiership, <laughs> but ever endorsement. Uh, this is my beloved son, in whom I'm well placed. We give God praise for that wonderful impartation of grace. So all our powers members, we want to say thank you for praying, your tenacity. We appreciate you all. The Lord will bless you in Jesus' name. For all our workers, we say thank you. Thank you. We give you, we appreciate you. We honor you. All our workers, thank you for a good work. The work has started. Now we need to start planning and doing a lot of things. Although for pandemic, most of our activity online, but your leaders will be letting you know all the things that we need to do. Our online community, what can we do without you? Today is because you're on the other side. Somebody can hear me from Milton Kings, United Kingdom, Dartford, and um, uh, USA, Canada. I'm seeing somebody dropping a comment that those of us abroad, how do we give? You know, Whatever I, uh, link you have before now is still okay, but we're working on a lot of things that will make giving from anywhere in the world, just like we had it on the PSM platform, easy for you on Island Church platform. But any link you have from our ministry, whether it's PSM or Island Church, before now, those of you abroad, you can use that link and your offering uh, will still uh, be fine. Praise the Lord. So we celebrate all the online community people, even those of you who can hear us but you cannot see us. Those are the people on Mixed LR. Uh, they conserve data, you know, or they, not data, they just love to hear. They don't like to see. <laughs> okay. Mixed LR, we celebrate you. Uh, we, we appreciate you. Those of you who don't even like to hear or see, but you just like to follow news on Twitter, we also acknowledge you. Uh, we appreciate you. What I'm saying now, somebody has tweeted it, you know, so we, we love you all. The Lord bless you. Please know the work has started tomorrow morning. We are here at 9 a.m. in the morning. I shall be ministering here by the grace of God, 9 a.m. in the morning tomorrow. 
Our services are now 9 a.m. and 1 p.m. on Sunday, but we will only do 9 a.m. for this time. When the pandemic is over and the church returns to normal service, then we can have 9 and 1. Tomorrow, only one service, 9 a.m. in the morning. Praise the Lord. Um, and it is a virtual service. You watch on our, all our platforms, Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, MixLR, Twitter, Everything we do is strictly online. One ID, HL Church, NG. That is our ID. It's on the screen right now. HL Church, NG. That is our ID on all of this platform, and you'll be blessed. And I have good news for you. You can also watch on our website. Praise the Lord. The website of this ministry is live right now, islandchurch.com.ng. You can watch our services on our website. Uh, anytime we have service, we are also live on our website. Praise the Lord. Amen. Somebody help me praise the Lord. Hallelujah. At this point, I would like us, those of us in studio, to stand on our feet as we bring this meeting to a close. Somebody lift up your voice and shout, thank you, Jesus, for a successful inauguration. Father, we want to say thank you. We give you praise. We give you glory. We give you honor. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for all that you have done for us as a ministry. We appreciate you, Lord. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Somebody you want to make inquiry about the ministry. All you need to do is to send us a mail. I think that will also be on the screen. Info at islandchurch.com.ng. You, you want to make inquiry about this ministry? Send us a mail on info at islandchurch.com.ng. Praise the Lord. Lift up your right hand as we close in this service. Father, we want to say thank you for glorious impartation on this inauguration service. Thank you for our father in the Lord, Pastor Shegun Kingsley. Thank you for the grace of God upon his life. And thank you because this grace is on the increase on a daily basis. Jesus, we give you praise. Lord, what you have started in Ireland Church today, my God, it shall be continuous. It shall be grace upon grace, increase upon increase. In the name of Jesus, for every member of this ministry, I declare you blessed. Everyone watching online, we declare you blessed. In the mighty name of Jesus. In this season of new things, receive your own new things. New vision, new assignment. Every prophecy that has gone ahead of you, you will fulfill it. You will fulfill destiny. In the name of Jesus. Faithful God, we just want to say thank you. We give you all the praise. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Together we will say, surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. We shall dwell in the presence of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. God bless you. I love you all. The Lord bless you all. Then we go over to praise. We end the meeting with praise. The Lord bless you all.
indeed it was an amazing time in god's presence thank you all for joining us online on this great occasion as from tomorrow july 12 our services hold 9 a.m every sunday and for our midweek service hours of grace hold every thursday 6 p.m island church raising global leaders empowered by grace